Are Russia and Africa preparing secret military operations? The United States is concerned about Russia's pledge to give Africa more military assistance. The U.S. is concerned about the potential effects on its strategic interests of Russia's expanding military presence in Africa. The U.S.-Russian relationship may further deteriorate as a result of this development. The nature of these covered missions is yet unknown, though. Let's investigate. Russia has promised Burkina Faso further assistance in its continuous fight against terrorist organizations. The West African country would receive a significant increase in Russian military instructors and weapons, according to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. This pledge demonstrates Russia's determination to increase its influence and presence in an area beset by instability and insurgency. The increase in military assistance coincides with Burkina Faso's ongoing struggle with extremist violence. The local government's attempts to stabilize the nation and more successfully fight extremism are anticipated to be strengthened by the additional Russian aid. Lavrov's trip to Africa included all of this. Was CME a surprise or was it all planned? What was the significance of this visit? A crucial part of a larger diplomatic trip that includes numerous West African nations. This tour is more than just a set of high-level gatherings. It is a calculated move by Russia to bolster its power in an area that is becoming more and more important in world politics. This visit has a complicated history that is entwined with Russia's larger foreign agenda, especially the continuing conflict with Ukraine and the geopolitical fallout that follows. Lavrov's tour's timing and location selection are especially instructive. Russia is aggressively working to forge new relationships and strengthen those it already has in other regions of the world as a result of the growing sanctions and diplomatic isolation it has experienced from Western nations as a result of its invasion of Ukraine. Due to its strategic location and abundance of resources, Africa has been a major focus of Russian foreign policy. This newfound focus on the continent is exemplified by Lavrov's engagements in West Africa. Russia's engagement in Africa has fluctuated over time, frequently impacted by broader trends in Cold War dynamics and post-Cold War realignments. But there has been a discernible uptick in Russian interest in Africa in recent years. Economic interests, geopolitical strategy, and the aim to offset Western influence are some of the driving forces behind this. Therefore, it is necessary to consider the trip to Burkina Faso in the broader framework of Russia's geopolitical realignment. Internal political unrest, including two coups in 10 months, has made the security situation worse. The political landscape of Burkina Faso has been drastically changed by these coups which have resulted in the evacuation of French military soldiers that were a vital component of the nation's security structure. A significant change in Burkina Faso's foreign policy and security approach was brought about by the evacuation of French forces. In the past, France has always positioned itself as a vital security partner by maintaining a significant military and political presence in its former colonies in West Africa. However, a reassessment of these partnerships has been prompted by the rise of anti-French sentiment, which is fostered by perceived neo-colonial attitudes and ineffective responses to security problems. The choice made by Burkina Faso to turn to Russia for military assistance is representative of this larger regional pattern. Thus, Lavrov's trip to Burkina Faso accomplishes several strategic goals. First of all, it is a chance to strengthen ties between the two countries and establish Russia as a vital security ally. This commitment is further demonstrated by the announcement of more Russian military instructors and equipment. Russia is establishing itself as a trustworthy partner in Burkina Faso's struggle against insurgency and extremism by offering practical assistance. In addition to strengthening Russia's position in the nation, this sends a wider message to other African countries thinking about making similar realignments. Second, 
The visit fits within a larger story about Russia's comeback on the international scene. The Kremlin is aggressively working to show that it is not alone and still has a big worldwide influence as Western nations put sanctions and diplomatic pressure on Russia. Interacting with African countries, which frequently have intricate and diverse links with Western nations, enables Russia to demonstrate its diplomatic influence on a worldwide scale. In the context of the UN and other international fora, where African votes and support might be vital, this is especially significant. Third, the economic aspects of Russia's involvement with Africa are brought to light by Lavrov's journey. Although security is the main emphasis of the trip to Burkina Faso, the larger tour also includes talks about trade and the economy. Russia is particularly interested in Africa's abundant natural resources, such as its mineral and energy assets. Therefore, ensuring access to these resources and developing business alliances that can counteract the effects of Western sanctions are equally important aspects of fortifying connections with African countries. Lavrov's visit has geopolitical ramifications that go beyond Burkina Faso. Russia is successfully creating a network of partnerships that can act as a check on Western power in the region by interacting with several West African nations. Given the Sahel's history of instability and extremism, this is especially pertinent. Russia's active involvement offers a different kind of partnership while Western nations, like as France and the US, revaluate their military and political plans in the Sahel. Additionally, it is important to view Lavrov's visit in the context of larger global events. Major powers are increasingly vying for influence in the global south, which includes Africa, Asia, and Latin America. For example, China's Belt and Road Initiative has made major strides in Africa by offering money and infrastructure in return for strategic alliances. Although the extent and size of Russia's operations vary, they are all part of a larger attempt to establish alliances and gain influence in a multipolar world order. Does Burkina Faso actually require Russian assistance given its political and security circumstances? The political and security environment of Burkina Faso, a landlocked nation in West Africa, has been seriously jeopardized by a web of violence and instability. A combination of internal and external forces are the cause of this ongoing unrest, which, taken together, have left the nation in a state of ongoing turmoil and unpredictability. Add your voice to the total liberation of Africa by leaving a comment in the comments section below. Please do not forget to subscribe for more informative videos like this one. Let's continue. The constant violence committed by extremist organizations is one of the most urgent problems Burkina Faso is now dealing with. The nation has turned into a battlefield for extremist groups within the last 10 years. To gain traction in Burkina Faso and its surrounding nations, these organizations have taken advantage of regional weaknesses like as porous borders, ineffective governance, and socio-economic grievances. Around 2015, the militant insurgency started to pick up steam, and attacks became increasingly frequent and sophisticated. These extremist organizations used strategies including bombings, killings and abductions to spread terror and seize control of large areas of land. Millions have been displaced and thousands have died as a result of their actions, causing an unprecedented humanitarian disaster. All populations have been forced to leave their homes in Burkina Faso's eastern and northern areas, which have been particularly heavily struck. Limited resources and ineffective security force coordination have frequently hindered the government's reaction. The violence has persisted despite international assistance, especially from France and other Western countries, underscoring the insurgency's intricate and deeply ingrained character. What about the volatility in politics? Political instability has been a major factor in the security dilemma. In just 10 months, Burkina Faso has seen two coups, which is a clear sign of how unstable its democratic institutions are. President Roach Mark Christian Cabaret was overthrown by soldiers in January 2022 in the first coup. 
pointing to his failure to fight the insurgency successfully. Under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Sandelbo Damiba, the military junta pledged to restore order and resolve the issues that had sparked the upheaval. The Amoeba's time there was brief though. In September 2022, Captain Ibrahim Traoré organized a second coup that resulted in his own removal. The political landscape has become unstable due to the quick succession of coups, which has also made efforts to restore stability more difficult and damaged public confidence in the government. Every leadership transition has resulted in changes to alliances and policies, fostering an atmosphere of unpredictability and instability. Following the coup, Burkina Faso turned away from its long-standing security allies by expelling French personnel. As we have stated, one significant aspect in Burkina Faso's continuous fight against extremism has been the move toward Russian assistance. This growing friendship was highlighted by Sergei Lavrov's recent visit. Lavrov made an announcement during his visit that Burkina Faso's security system will receive a major boost in the form of more Russian military instructors and equipment. The goal of African countries to diversify their foreign alliances is reflected in their collaboration with Russia. As part of its plan to increase its worldwide influence, Russia has been aggressively courting African countries, providing political support, economic investments, and military help. Russia's heightened involvement in Burkina Faso is representative of this broader geopolitical approach. Burkina Faso's efforts to fight the insurgency are anticipated to be strengthened by the arrival of Russian assistance. Is Russia's participation justified by the reasons? Why is Burkina Faso turning to Russia when it wishes to stop depending on the West? Why not be self-sufficient? Burkina Faso is currently experiencing a severe humanitarian crisis as a result of political unrest and extremist violence. More than 2 million people have been displaced by the ongoing fighting, and many of them are living in unstable situations with no access to essential services like food, water, and medical treatment. Children make up the bulk of those displaced, and they are particularly vulnerable to exploitation, illness, and malnourishment. Burkina Faso has been identified by the Norwegian Refugee Council as one of the most ignored crises globally, underscoring the pressing need for humanitarian support. An estimated 6.3 million individuals would need humanitarian assistance in 2024. Notwithstanding these startling statistics, the international community has not responded enough, with large financing and resource shortages. The displaced populace has endured severe trauma. Numerous people have seen or experienced violent acts, resulting in considerable psychological suffering. This problem is made worse by the dearth of proper mental health care, which deprives many people of the assistance they require to deal with their experiences. Due to financial limitations and security restrictions, humanitarian organizations on the ground are finding it difficult to meet these demands. The road ahead is still paved with obstacles as Burkina Faso negotiates this complicated terrain of political unrest and security threats. Restoring political stability and public trust in state institutions is just as important as the government's capacity to successfully fight extremism. In addition to being a practical reaction to urgent security concerns, the move toward Russian assistance highlights the larger restructuring of regional foreign relationships. Stabilizing the security situation and resolving the humanitarian catastrophe are Burkina Faso's top priorities right now. This calls for both military action and all-encompassing plans to deal with the underlying reasons of the insurgency, such as social marginalization, unemployment and poverty. Achieving lasting peace requires restoring faith in democratic institutions and bolstering governance. The role of the international community is equally crucial. In order to assist Burkina Faso in overcoming its present difficulties, more humanitarian aid, backing for development projects, and diplomatic involvement are essential. A concerted and persistent effort from both domestic and foreign actors is necessary as the nation attempts to navigate its way out of current crisis in order to establish the groundwork for a more secure and prosperous future.
What reaction has the West had to this? The international reaction to Burkina Faso's humanitarian catastrophe and serious security issues has been characterized by a clear distancing from Western governments and growing criticism of Russian participation in the region. In addition to addressing domestic issues, the United States' strategic focus has been turning toward opposing powerful nations like China and Russia. Despite the Sahel's continued security concerns, this reorganization has resulted in a decrease in funding and attention allocated to the region. This larger strategic realignment is exemplified by the disengagement from Afghanistan and the shift to the Indo-Pacific area. Western nations have re-examined their overseas aid budgets as a result of economic strains made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic and other worldwide economic issues. As a result, nations like Burkina Faso, which mostly depend on outside assistance to handle their issues, have received less financial aid. Humanitarian groups' capacity to adequately address the needs of displaced and vulnerable populations has been adversely impacted by the cutback in aid. Russia has filled the hole left by the decline of Western influence by providing Burkina Faso with strategic and military assistance. Significant criticism and a range of responses have been received to this change, especially from Western governments and international observers. Will Russia totally supplant the West in Africa in the next years? Russia has developed strong relationships throughout Africa by skillfully utilizing its military assistance and diplomatic contacts. Russian officials' high-profile trips, like Sergei Lavrov's most recent tour of West Africa, highlight the country's dedication to strengthening its relations with the continent. Russia offers practical assistance that many African countries appreciate, especially those facing security issues like Burkina Faso by providing military instructors, equipment, and training. In addition to meeting urgent security requirements, this military support builds enduring relationships that may eventually reduce dependency on Western military help. Russia is very interested in Africa's abundant natural riches. Russia is ensuring access to vital resources and promoting the economic growth of African countries by investing in mining, energy, and infrastructure. Initiatives include cooperative partnerships for the discovery of oil and gas or the construction of facilities for mineral extraction. Draw attention to Russia's readiness to make investments in the future of the continent. These economic connections benefit both parties, giving Russia access to new markets and vital resources while also fostering stability and progress in Africa. Russia's policy of non-interference in domestic affairs is one of its alluring features to African nations. Russia tends to concentrate on practical collaboration without imposing such requirements, in contrast to other Western nations that frequently condition their support on political reforms or improvements in human rights. Many African leaders who choose alliances that honor their political choices and sovereignty find resonance in this strategy. Russia's political backing can therefore be a stabilizing influence, especially in nations that are dealing with internal strife or political instability. Russia's involvement in Africa extends beyond its economic and military interests. Cooperation in education and technology is another essential element of its approach. Russia supports in educational initiatives, provides scholarships to African students, and encourages technology transfers that can strengthen local capabilities. These programs promote goodwill and long-term collaborations by helping to lay the groundwork for ongoing cooperation and growth. With new powers like China and Russia taking center stage, the geopolitical landscape of the world is moving toward multipolarity. African nations now have the chance to expand their international alliances beyond conventional Western collaborations as a result of this change. Russia is well positioned to fill the void left by the decline of Western power in various areas as a result of internal priorities, geopolitical realignments, or economic difficulties. Russia is establishing itself as a major actor in this emerging multipolar global order by actively interacting with African countries. Western engagement in Africa will probably end entirely 
and the geopolitical landscape will undergo a dramatic shift. Russia's increasing influence has the potential to drastically shift the continent's power dynamics as Western dominance declines. With Russia playing a key role in determining Africa's destiny, this change may signal the beginning of a new era of collaboration and advancement. Significant changes will occur in the political, military, and economic domains as a result of Russia's growing power. Russia could create new trade deals in the economy, invest in natural resources and infrastructure projects to strengthen African economies and promote reciprocal development. Politically, Russia's involvement might result in closer diplomatic relations and provide African countries a strong ally on the international scene. Political stability may rise as a result, and there may be fresh opportunities to resolve regional disputes and governance issues. Russia's military presence might change the dynamics of security by offering help in the form of counter-terrorism support, weapons supplies, and training. African countries may become better equipped to manage both internal and external challenges as a result, making the continent safer and more stable. Additionally, Russia's participation would encourage a multipolar global order, which would lessen Africa's reliance on Western nations and allow for a more equitable distribution of power on a worldwide scale. Diversifying alliances and collaborations has the potential to promote sustainable development, innovation, and a more inclusive approach to tackling global issues including economic inequality, health problems, and climate change. Will there also be covered operations that the West needs to be wary of? It is possible that Russia and its African allies might carry out covert operations or secret missions in addition to overt diplomatic, economic, and military engagements in order to challenge Western dominance on the continent. Russia might step up its intelligence collection in Africa, working with regional administrations to keep an eye on Western operations and thwart Western influence. Cyber espionage, surveillance, and infiltration of Western networks functioning in Africa are a few examples of these efforts. In certain areas, Russia may covertly aid opposition movements or insurgent groups that serve its objectives in an effort to topple regimes that are strongly associated with Western nations. This could entail supplying money, training, and weapons. The plan can include covert economic activities like sabotaging Western companies or upsetting supply lines that are vital to Western economies. Economic warfare could include financial system hacking, infrastructure cyber attacks, and other tactics. Behind closed doors, Russia may negotiate covert pacts with African countries, offering economic assistance, resource sharing, or military backing in return for political allegiance and resistance to Western policy. These partnerships could go unnoticed by the general public, resulting in an influence network that is not immediately apparent. Russia may use sophisticated propaganda and disinformation tactics to influence public opinion and foster mistrust of Western institutions. This could entail disseminating false information, influencing public opinion on social media, and eroding trust in projects supported by the West. The West is probably keeping a careful eye on Russia's actions in Africa and is aware of these possible tactics. In order to combat Russian influence, Western countries may respond by stepping up their own clandestine activities, supporting friendly governments, and improving their intelligence capacities. Do you believe that the current emphasis on military ties between Russia and Africa will be successful? What if they made it more intense? Why is Russia so eager to establish military connections with Africa? Tell us what you think in the comments section below. We explore the rich history, culture, and the ongoing struggle for sovereignty in Africa. Join us in this important conversation by subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just staying informed, you're becoming part of a movement dedicated to reclaiming Africa's rightful place on the global stage. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Let's work together to spread knowledge and inspire change. Thanks for watching.